These recent Times articles, which are about Apple's production facilities in, in South China, um, what they depicted was a, you know, it's a pretty outrageous uh, uh, production system in which you have tens of thousands of uh, of workers are in, in close to sort of a you know slavery conditions, uh, uh, you know working uh, for very small uh, paychecks to uh, put together the iPhones and iPads that that we use here in this country, and it's a you know it's it's a, a, a some good hard hitting. Uh, 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 journalism. What I show in my piece for Harper's is actually that uh, a lot of the same sort of practices are being applied to workers here in the States. And what, by, what I mean by that is that uh, we're, we're not seeing the kind of uh, physical uh, sort of mistreatment of, of, of workers that you see in China. But what we see here is that uh, this sort of enclosure of the of the marketplaces that these these workers use to go out and get jobs, and, and specifically last year, one of the the pieces I the the stories that I cover in depth in this piece is uh, what happened with um, uh, uh, the DOJ, the Department of Justice, the Antitrust Division, actually busted Apple and uh, five other firms, five other large giant uh, tech firms in Silicon Valley uh, for basically running a labor cartel in which they agreed not to hire each other's workers. And uh, you know, we, we should remember these are workers, these are PhD scientists, these are PhD engineers. This is sort of the, the flower of uh, America's uh, 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 education system and here these people go out and they, they work for, for these big companies and they're told that they're going to uh, you know, be paid for you know, fair, wa uh, fair wages for their work and then they find out that there's a secret agreement behind the scenes by very top level people in these corporations not to hire, not to compete for each other's workers. So that is a, um, uh, that's a pretty outrageous way to treat American workers. And so, and the point is, is that uh, you know, so we're seeing what we see in China, what these Times reports, New York Times uh, articles in China show. We're seeing something similar starting to take place in the United States, even for white collar workers. The main point I really want to make in this, in the article uh, for Harper's, is that uh, this is something that is is we're seeing it, it's increasingly the case in almost every industry in the United States. And uh, I mean, part of the problem is this, that we've allowed for so much consolidation to take place. And uh, I mean, you think about a, a marketplace, the, uh, an open marketplace, you have uh, many of us providing work or many of us bringing, uh, say, chickens to, uh, to market. And then if it's an open marketplace, you'll have many buyers, many people who want to buy our work or, or buy our goods or buy our ideas. And then if you have an open marketplace like that, then everyone gets a, a, a relatively fair, they should get a fair uh, uh, wage or they should get a fair uh, uh, price for their, their goods. Uh, but what we see in, in sector after sector after sector in the United States is one or two firms have taken control over the entire marketplace and that gives them the power to dictate terms to the people who are selling their work, selling their labor, that are selling their goods or their ideas into that marketplace. Uh, you know, other cases are, we see this um, in uh, one of the, the, the worst cases now is in the uh, book industry where you see Amazon has captured de facto control over the American publishing industry. And that means the, you have uh, six big publishers, but you have a number of smaller publishers uh, to whom they essentially dictate terms. And then you have under those publishers, the people who write our books, who edit our books, uh, and, and so this is a, a pretty new situation and it's a pretty outrageous situation.